All right, hello and welcome to Adobe InDesign. My name is Terry White. Today we're going to be talking, just doing a quickie on how to create a table of contents. Creating a table of contents is not a new thing. Been in InDesign almost since day one. But yet, I still run into people that do it manually or do it the hard way and don't really understand that there's an actual uh, table of contents feature built right in that you can not only use, but if your content changes, you can also update. Uh, so Nayan's here, Craig's here, Victoria's here, John's here, and welcome, welcome all. All right, if I didn't get a chance to give you a personal shout out, my hello is to you wherever you are in the world. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the computer. I'm going to show you an, a sample InDesign document that's kind of ready for a table of contents, and we're going to show how to create it from scratch. All right, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm on the computer now, and I've got this Playfest souvenir booklet. And if we page through it, uh, actually we can do it this way. If we page through it, we can see that there's, uh, of course, the, let me go back one. There's the introductions page, there's the overview page, there's the Vimes page, there's the Jesse Boykins page, there's the credits. All right, and that's it. So if we wanted to create a table of contents for this short document, and let's say put it right here at the beginning, what I don't want you to do is draw a text frame, type a two, tab over and type introductions. Type of three, tab over and type whatever. Don't do it manually. With a little, just a little bit of work up front, your table of contents for hundreds of pages can be generated automatically. So what's that little bit of work up front? What you have to do is designate in your content um, a paragraph style that's going to be used as the table of contents. So for example, um, for every section of a book, there's usually the, um, the chapter title. Or for every you know, magazine, there's the, art, there's the name of the article. So all of those would be candidates for the table of contents. And what each of those have in common is that they're usually styled the same. So for example, all the chapter uh, titles look the same. They may be, of course, they say different things, but they have the same font, same size, same color. And then of course the body copy, and, and then it goes on. So that paragraph style, whatever you're using to break up your content, that's what you would use for your table of contents. And if you're not using paragraph style, now would be a good time to learn and use one. So for example, I noticed that in this particular publication, first thing I looked for was, well, wait a minute, that overview, that looks more like a graphic design. That's not really a header. And then I got to the next page, and I saw that, whoa, whoa, Vimes, that's definitely, a, looks like a Photoshop file, that's not. And then I remember looking down and saying, oh, it's down here at the bottom. That's the actual chapter, or in this case, public um, story title. So if you go through and you look at each page, each page has the actual um, story title at the bottom. So it's got the overview there, it's got introductions there, so forth and so on. Now if we dig a little further and we actually click into that, go into it with our type tool, there we go, and here I'm going to zoom in a little bit on it so you can see it. If we go into the word introductions and then we go over to the paragraph styles, aha, I can see that someone created a style called TOC. Does it have to be called TLC? Absolutely not. You can call it paragraph header, uh, chapter title, article name, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be called anything in particular. But what it does have to be is used consistently for all your chapter titles or article titles or whatever. So it can be styled any way you want. It can be named anything you want as long as you used it on every single one. So if I were to go to the next page, and click into overview, overview is using table of contents. If I use any other style, this won't work. So it has to be consistent all the way through. Um, so now, how do I know that that's actually consistent? Well, let's change it. Let's double click on it. Let's go into basic paragraph formats. 
Right now, it's, uh, it's, it's this font, grotesque light. And let's say I made it extra bold instead, just to see a visual difference. As a matter of fact, it made it so different, it's too big. Let's go back and make it a little smaller, too. Uh, let's make it six point. Let's see if that'll fit. There we go. So overview. And now if I go to each one of those pages now, they should all get bold and be six points. See what I mean? So every single one of those uses the same TOC paragraph style. So I'm going to go back to that and switch it back. Basic formats. We're going to change it back to seven point and make it light like they had it before. Click OK. And now they all get light. Okay, so using the same paragraph style. So how do you create a paragraph style? Easiest way is to format something the way you want it to look, and then just simply click the new button. It will call it paragraph style number one, paragraph style number two, and then you can call it whatever you want. Articles, article headings, whatever you want to call it. And now you, you would have something to include in the table of contents. And it has to be the thing, the whatever it is, it's the only thing using that style. So for example, I can't use introductions here and then also use it for something else in the content. It not only has to be consistent, but it also has to be unique. I'm only using the TOC for the actual uh, article headings. So now that we got the rules out of the way and showed how quick, quick and easy we can make one, let's switch that back to TOC by the way. Um, now, how do we make our table of contents? Well, once you've done that, the rest is easy. You've gone through all your content for every article or chapter or whatever it is. You're using the same um, paragraph style with the same name. Now, to make your table of contents, all you have to do is go up to Layout and come down to Table of Contents. That will let you build one from scratch. So, now this, this dialog box blows my mind because it's, it can be confusing. So take it a step at a time. So number one, um, TOC style. This is how the table of contents will look. That's all. So if you leave it on the default, that means it'll use whatever style you've set or it'll use the style of the table of contents itself. But in this case, they made a paragraph style called Playfest for the actual look and feel of the, of the table of contents itself. All right, title. You can either leave it blank or you can put in whatever you want. You can put in contents, for example, or table of contents, or articles, or whatever you know, words you want to put there, or if you want nothing there, leave it blank. Then you can style the word. So you can actually style that as well. So I'm going to say no paragraph style for that. Next, normally this would be blank on the left-hand side. And what you would then put on the left-hand side is whichever one of those style sheets you create it to be your table of contents. In other words, everything that uses TOC, I want to be listed in the table of contents. That's how you do it. <clears throat> then you can actually style the actual entries themselves. So I'm just going to make them the same style. And last but not least, if you're going to ever export this to PDF or to the or to uh, publish online or anything like that, you want to make it interactive, I highly recommend you click the Create PDF Bookmarks. That's it. Now when you click OK, what it's going to do is it's going to generate a table of contents and fill your cursor with it so you can place it anywhere you want. So you would go to the page that's going to have the table of contents on it and just click and drag or click to place the table of contents that it just built. So there's the one it just built. Now, if I don't like any parts of it, I can go back and restyle it. So for example, I'm not totally happy with the tabbing of it. It looks like it made a table of contents um, and then just used a tab entry for each one. So what I would have to do is go find the style that that is built on, which I think it was called, I'd have to go back and find it again in the table of contents, but I'd have to go and edit that style so that my tab gets adjusted. Now, aside from the way it looks, notice what it did. Let's zoom in a little bit on it. It put the, um, let me check one thing here. 
Ah, okay, I see it's using that same one. Okay, um, it put the entries in, it put the page numbers in, and of course the entries are what they are. So let's say you were to go in and say, oops, that shouldn't say introductions, it should say introduction. Don't go change the table of contents. Change the actual article wherever, the, wherever it lives. So take off the S, that should say introduction, not introductions. And now when I go back, of course, the table of contents is still wrong. All you have to do is just click on your table of contents with the selection tool. And then once you click on it with the selection tool, when you go up to the layout menu, update table of contents will be available. That means go back through all the articles and make any changes that need to be changed. So it just did. It just did it and it restyled it also based on the new style. All right, so anyway, that's my new table of contents with the introduction. And of course, the all the other ones are correct. So you can also style whether the number goes in front, the number goes after, whether there's a tab entry, so forth and so on. And you do all of that in table of contents, replace the existing table of contents, and you do all of that, I believe, in the, or probably in the style sheet itself. Let's go to more options. No, sorry, more options right here. So, um, uh, be, okay, here it is. Page number before the entry and between the entry and the page number, put a tab. So that's how that page number got updated. When I clicked on it again, it changed it. Okay, so this is where you would say if you want the page number after the entry, before the entry or no page number. Just let people, if it's an electronic document, just tap on it to go to where they want it to go. Um, whether you want the entry sorted in alphabetical order, I would never want to do that. I want them in the order of the articles in, but that is a choice. Uh, so all kinds of options under the more options for, again, how you want it to be styled. Uh, so I'll cancel out of that, and that is how you would create a table of contents. Make any other changes, you can always go back in and update the table of contents as long as the table of contents is selected or you have your cursor in it, update table of contents will be available to you. All right. Uh, great. Glad you're watching from the Philippines, Marvin. Welcome. And let's see if I got any, any questions about any of this. Lots of hellos. Hello, everyone. You're welcome for the templates. Hey, did they post those already? I need to go find those, Craig. Are they on the uh, Lightroom page? I meant to go back and look. All right, so cool. Glad, I just see lots of shout outs. All right, so again, not a new thing. Been in InDesign for years and years and years, but I hate people, I hate to see people doing it the hard way. So that's why I took time out today to show you. All right, with that said, thanks for watching everyone. Um, I will be out next week as Adobe is closed for the week. And then I'll be on vacation, so <laughs> I'm taking two weeks off. So next week off, week after that off, um, I'll be posting on social media from my vacation spot, which I will show, share with you when I'm there. And then from that point on, I'll be back in a couple of weeks to pick up the streaming schedule again. So with that said, thanks for watching. Uh, have, have a happy weekend and, of course, a great 4th of July uh, if you're here in the U.S., and uh, I saw a question there, how backwards compatible was that the question? How backwards compatible with opening from an older version? Uh, InDesign can open, I think, all older versions. You can save back to an IDML file to have that open in older versions. But if you're trying to just open an older document, I think you can open up all the way back to 1.0. Um, I've not seen anything that suggested otherwise. And there was even at one point a PageMaker converter that lets you convert PageMaker documents into InDesign. So opening forward should not be a problem. Saving back would depend on what how, how far you're trying to go back. Um, other main pages that each contain their own content. How would you make a content page which gets you, for example, three other main pages? that each one contains their own content page. I'm not sure I understand the question. You can, you can have multiple entries in the table of contents, so you can use multiple styles, if that answers the question. Um, you can have articles that are on the same page. So if I had introduction and overview on page two, as long as I use the same TLC style or style, 
they would both be included. So either way, that should cover it. Either using multiple style sheets for your multiple page operation, or using the same style on the same page would get you there too. So uh, if I go back, here, let me go back real quick and show you that. If I go back to the table of contents dialog box, you'll notice that I can continue adding more styles in here. I don't have to just use one. So if that, uh, if you had more, like a complicated document that was using head, headers and subheads and all that, and you wanted all of that included, you can absolutely add more than one in here. So if I select intro, for example, now it's gonna be based on TLC and see how it, it tabbed over intro, that would be based next. So as complex as your document can be, so can your table of contents. All right, with that said, thanks for watching everybody, and we will catch you on the next one which is going to be in a couple of weeks for me. Later. Have a great weekend. Have a great holiday. I'll see you when I'm back. Bye, everybody.